Welcome to By the Numbers. I'm Renee Smith. And I'm Michelle Filoni. Well, Michelle, today we're going to talk about a big concept. A big concept. Big concept. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about relative magnitude of numbers. Okay. The, the word the, sounds big. big. Well, let me, just a minute, let me write You're going to write it down. Sure relative. I, is this like your relatives are coming to town? No. Relative. Not exactly. Magnitude. Magnitude. And what, you have big relatives. That's I, what that means. There you go. Huge relatives. There you go. Okay. Well, actually, magnitude just refers to the size. It actually could be little numbers as well. Okay. Little numbers okay. or big numbers. But actually, kids, some kids, and I, this is a theory of mine, believe it or not, um, I believe some kids actually have a number line in their head. Oh, I believe you're right. I think that certain individuals who are inherently good at math actually can benchmark in their head where a number would fall on a, on a number line. Mm -hmm. And so they, they know where numbers are in comparison to other numbers. But unfortunately, that's not all kids. Right. And so there are ways we can help them learn to do that benchmarking skill. And I love the number line. I used to use number lines all the time in my classroom. Because benchmarking is great for estimation. Uh, if you right. can't benchmark, you probably can't estimate Right. Well. You won't know exactly where okay. it falls. So one thing that I would do to help to help my children okay. is to just have a very simple number line and I just drew that one. Okay. You could you could actually download those off the internet as well but I just drew that on plain paper mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm going to start out simple. I put two endpoints that most of our kids are going to be familiar with. I put a zero on one end and a hundred on mm -hmm. the other end and then I made I, I told them where 25 would land and mm -hmm. then I put two that don't have numbers. Mm -hmm. And so what we want kids to start to do is be able to fill in what they think goes on those two points on the number line. And if they know about numbers and they can... And quarters. And quarters <laughs> of a dollar, uh -huh. Uh -huh. they should be able to tell me that what would... Who would this be? What who that, would that be if I had to name that? That one? would be fifty cents. That would be fifty or because 50. It, fifty because it's right in the middle between mm -hmm. my zero and my one hundred, and then again if, like you said, if they know uh, about quarters of a dollar, mm -hmm. there's twenty five. There's the first quarter. There's the second cents, quarter. So this one would have to be the seventy five. Mm -hmm. And so I've started really simply, simply to try to scaffold for kids where that might be. I might back it up and and actually show them a real number line that's already filled in mm -hmm. before I started with this. If I thought that they needed that so, help. So for younger kids, if I wanted to go 0 to 10, right. I might leave the 5 blank and I might leave the 6 blank and the 9 blank and fill in some of the other numbers for uh -huh. them. Absolutely. So that, okay. so that could be a starting point for littler kids. Just uh, something I love is, again, you were talking about a number line and when we went to a presentation once and they talked about it's not a number ray. It's a number line means it goes on in both directions. Right. So even there are numbers on the other side of zero. Right. Which sometimes kids don't know there's numbers because they only see it starting at zero. So the number line means it goes which into negative numbers. Which well. is why I moved the, the zero, zero over off. to the mm -hmm. right a little to indicate that this yeah. line is going on in that mm -hmm. direction. Okay, the next step to make it I see patterns there too. The next you know, when they're talking twenty five fifty 0, 25, 50, 75, uh -huh. a dollar. Right. Okay, so then to make it a little harder, I've left my endpoints as 0 and 100, mm -hmm. but now I didn't give them the exact quarter, and I've, but I've gotten close. I've got mm -hmm. a 21, and I've got a 49. So I know my number's got to be closer to 21 than it is to 49. Right. And so here they might not get the exact number that you would that you were thinking of. You but just if, don't want them to put 80 there. I don't want them to put 80 there. <laughs> Absolutely. So they'd say 31 or 33. Okay, so if you want to put 33 there, mm -hmm. that would be close. What would be close here for, if we know that this is close to 50 and that's close to 75? 69. Maybe 69. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, we've just upped the ante a little bit and made it a little more difficult because we didn't give them quarter segments right. or or if we went back to your earlier example of between zero and ten we didn't give them by ones. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then the last and again you can just draw these number lines out free so hand. easily. Yeah. Free hand. I, I used a ruler yeah. so that I kind of kept them halfway decent looking but mm -hmm. but they wouldn't have to be anything special. Okay. Now this time I've really Ooh, upped the ante. I like it. What, what have I done differently on this one? Well, instead of having your endpoints be 0 and 100, right. it's now, we don't know it for sure if that's 0. I haven't thought about it yet. 
probably is zero. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take your word for it and put zero there. Okay. So then this is about one hundred, okay. which is halfway between zero and two hundred, okay. which makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. And so I'd say this one's probably 60. All righty. I think you're guessing exactly what I thought. Now, I have a question. Is the 200 the big line? Sorry, here? it's this It's this one. You're looking for F. That's F. I've labeled them with, okay. with letters. So this might be 195. Okay, 195. And let's see, I'm going to do this. About in the middle would be 150, so I'm going to say that's about 160. Okay. 160. Should use the correct one. And since that's about halfway, a little less than halfway, I'll say that's about 125. I like a lot of the things that you did. I noticed that when you had, when you, well, actually, let's start where you started. You went with zero as your endpoint, mm -hmm. and then you knew this was 50, so you kind of spaced over and said, okay, it was about the same amount of space, mm -hmm. so that would be the 100. This, you knew, would be broken into five equal segments, so you called that one 60 mm -hmm. because that looked like it was about one-fifth of the distance here. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. And then you went between the 100 and the 200 and started to figure out what these others were based upon the size, size of the of space mm -hmm. in between each of the tick marks or the lines mm -hmm. on the number mm -hmm. line. Great strategy, and that's exactly what we want kids to start to be able to do. So if kids don't do that naturally, would it be a good idea for parents to, as they're doing some of them, talk out loud Abs like I did? Absolutely. I think that the modeling process of modeling how we think helps kids start to do that as well. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a great way to help kids start to see relative magnitude of numbers, and this is one of my very favorite tools for math, which is the number line. Yeah. So Thanks for joining us for another episode of By the Numbers. And for more episodes of By the Numbers or other shows, go to MyKidsTurn.com.